I was uh, abandoned by my family doctor and I'm looking uh, for a replacement. I'm 81 years old. I have medical conditions. I am, for the first time in my life, without a family doctor. I've been promised universal health care, and I feel I've been lied to. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Hi. how are you? It pains me, the, the folks who are in our community without access to a family doctor, and I feel terrible that I can't take on more people because we can barely take care of the people we already have. As Canadians, we're told we have universal health care. We're proud of it. It's become part of our identity. But is it true? Because millions of Canadians today don't have a family doctor. Is the promise of universal health care in Canada broken? I've been phoning family physicians uh, almost everywhere within a two-hour drive of here, and uh, there's nobody taking any, uh, any new patients. Meet Hugh Greenwood. His family doctor moved away a year ago, and ever since he's been searching for a new one. I phone. The answer is they will look for me, but don't hold your breath that uh, there are few doctors taking new patients and um, chances are slim, if at all. Hugh takes medication for his hypertension and thyroid condition, but he only has a few months supply left. When I open the pill container, I'm thinking, what's going to happen if I don't get my renewals? I know that my blood won't be thin enough to, to stop clotting, and I probably won't be here that long. You understand he could go to a walk-in clinic and see someone about his medications, but at his age and with his complex medical problems, he wants his own family doctor. In this area, all around Owen Sound, Ontario, there are many people without a family physician. Things have gotten so bad that take a look at this. Along the highway at both ends of town, there are these billboards advertising for physicians. The shortage of family doctors is a national problem. More than six million Canadians don't have one. And it's not just patients looking for doctors, it's entire towns. I'm up here. I'm in Marmara, Ontario. And Dr. Emily Callery shows me what they have to offer to get a doctor to come here. Wow. Yeah. Pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Really nice view this way. This is one of the two clinical spaces that's offered um, rent-free accommodation for any physicians that we recruit to the area. We've got a nice loft space upstairs, so there's actually a, a bedroom and a, and a bathroom upstairs. Of course we can. Yeah. After you. Dr. Callery is a family physician here, but they need another one because there are a thousand people Pretty in the surrounding bright. area who go without. And get this, Dr. Callery has been searching for two years. So a physician could live here rent-free for how long? For, for five years, the term of their duration here. Um, it's a great opportunity. I think a lot of physicians could also just see it as a place to, to land to get their feet settled, which is a huge incentive. It was the incentives that brought Dr. Callery here. But she never thought her duties would include recruiting other physicians. You're already trying to do your day-to-day -day clinical work and your administrative work. I think it does add to that stress to feel like you have to also be wearing a recruiter's hat. And, and that is a mental stress that you just don't want to carry because you do feel that responsibility and an onus to take on more patients in the community, take on more patients into your practice. And when you can't, it's pretty heartbreaking to try to turn away people who you know desperately need that, that family care, that primary practitioner. The need for a new doctor here is critical, so much so that the town's offer also includes money, a lot of money. $100,000 is a signing bonus. That's also matched $100,000 from Hastings County. In addition to the provincially offered incentive, there's another $80,000 to be, to be had from that, definitely. $280,000, and they still can't find someone. How come? To answer that, I'm on my way to meet the person who has done the most comprehensive study of primary care in Ontario. Dr. Michael Green is a family physician, and he heads up the family medicine program at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. He tells me there's no single reason for the shortage. Our training programs have not kept pace with training enough people to do family medicine. There were more doctors retired during the pandemic than usual, uh, about double compared to average. Um, and there's a lot of doctors coming up on retirement. Put that together with a population that keeps growing 
and the family doctor shortage is a kind of time bomb. Millions of Canadians without family doctors, what's, what's the solution? I think one of the answers is teams. For me, it's really important that I have a relationship with my patient, but a system that relies only on doctors is not going to be able to get us out of this crisis. Doctors like me need to be able to have support from a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, a community paramedic, a social work counselor, a whole team to help provide the kind of care that the more complex patients I'm seeing today need. Dr. Green wants this kind of team approach across the board. But for that to happen, governments need to spend more money on primary care. And Canada only spends about half as much as other industrialized nations. You know, is, is the promise of universal health care, is, is that a broken promise? I think it is. If you don't have access to a family doctor in Canada, you can't access fully all of the benefits of our publicly funded health care system because you don't have an entry point and you don't have someone to coordinate your care. Yeah, come on down. The problem is more than just the huge number of Canadians who don't have a family doctor. It's also the conditions family physicians work in because of the shortage. Alrighty. Here in Verona, Ontario, Dr. Saber Givens is the only family doctor in town. Okay. So what are your concerns today? So I saw the rheumatologist. Dr. Week. Gibbons okay. has 2,500 patients. That's around double the usual number. For seven years, I've been looking for someone to partner with so that we could share the load, and we're still looking. I had no clue that seven years later, I would still be looking for a practice partner. So can you go to your daily patterns? And Dr. Gibbons tells me that's taken a toll. It's a struggle. Um, it's, it's a lot. Um, I'm not able to practice up to the standards that I was hoping to, and I'm so busy every day fighting fires and seeing the people who are coming in and all the questions and whatnot that things slip. Things slip just because you don't have enough time. Yes, all the time. And there are people that call in and they, they want to be seen today. They have an a pressing concern today and I don't even know about it until I see them a month later because I can't possibly hear about every single person that's calling in and I can't, I can't see them when they want to be seen. We really feel like we're failing. I feel like I'm failing on a regular basis that I can't meet those needs. Knowing what you know now, Looking back, would, would you have taken the job? If I had known then what I know now, I probably would have chosen differently. So your liver function tests are totally fine. Okay. Yeah. So Dr. Gibbons says she'll keep working because she cares about her patients. Yep. But she's an example of how hard it is to work in a system that's maxed out. All right. Good. And how it doesn't Come work for hands. doctors we'll or patients. Or Rachel can post it. Okay. I'm on heart medication and uh, thyroid, and, and uh, I don't have a physician to um, renew prescriptions for me. For Hugh Greenwood, he's worried that not having a family doctor will shorten his life. Um, I have grandchildren that I, that I care about. I have a wife that uh, I care about, and, and I would like to be here for a while. What does your situation tell you about the promise of universal health care? It bothers me that um, we keep on hearing that we have universal health care, and I think, I don't think so. All of a sudden, there are cracks in our, in our system, and uh, it's, it's not universal health care anymore. Nick Purden, CBC News, Owen Sound, Ontario.